Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce to you tonight uh, Kate Horan, uh, who is number three on our Senate ticket and uh, does live in North Queensland. Um, I do have a little bit of a bio which I'll share with you. So Kate was born and raised in country South Australia, Corey's hometown, there you go. Uh, she moved uh, to, <clears throat> sorry, to North Queensland three years ago and has adopted it. Fair to say, Kate? Yes, she's fallen in love with it, which is great, and she is a passionate North Queenslander. Uh, I do know when uh, Senate nominations opened, she was one of the first to nominate, uh, and she would kick and scream, you need to represent North Queensland. So there you go. But anyway, with no further ado, could you please welcome Kate Horan to share with us. right here is that they always put me after P.T. Barnum yeah, exactly. and I feel like I have to sing a song or I don't know tell a knock knock joke or something just to keep it the vibe in the room but anyway here we go um, I am passionate about two things um, North Queensland actually let me educate you guys we refer to it as Kingsland the Kingsland so that's my one passion Kingsland and my other passion is young conservatives. So I will touch on young conservatives. Um, I've been speaking to some teachers here tonight and uh, we're just talking about the state of play and the socialistic agenda in our education system and the indoctrination that is taking place. And it's very disturbing, but let me tell you, there are the green shoots of hope. There really are amongst our youth. And I want to introduce to you, Liam, can you just stand up and just give a wave? Because this guy here, yes, he is a rising star and he very much deserves your applause tonight. So he does kind of heads up our young conservatives uh, in, in Brisbane. And we joined forces a little while back to tap into this and he does an amazing job. I just really want to acknowledge him. Um, but there is a growing movement of young people who are pushing back against this tide of indoctrination and we're going to be there to tap into it. So we're growing all the time, doing events, um, we've got to 6,000 um, social media followers now but our, some of our posts are reaching, is it 3 million? Up to 3 million people. So we just watch this space, it's a growing force. Um, just talking about Kingsland. <laughs> So many of the regions, and I'm passionate about the regions, I did grow up a country girl, so many of the issues in the regions can be solved by Conservative Party policy. We need logic, we need balance, we need common sense. Sometimes it is, it is just that simple. So, you know, in the regions we need cheap energy, we need to support small business, we need to cut through red tape, we need to increase our farmers' productivity and not have this ridiculous threat of vegan terrorism and these other things which are just halting, halting our country. And we really need to, to build strong communities and a really strong identity. Um, the Conservative Party has very strong policies and excellent messages. So people need to hear these messages. And in North Queensland, we have been working and are continuing to work to get this message across, the message of the Australian Conservative Party. So we are working tirelessly. We're doing a lot of brand awareness. We're going out in the community. We've got visibility. We're trying to um, tap into key community connections and key community groups. And we are making inroads. We're in it for the, for the long haul. We are making inroads. Um, I was firing off a number of Pulitzer Prize worthy letters to the editor and I was really shocked when they didn't uptake a single one of them. I was brilliant, I'm rereading it, I'm rereading it, oh, it's still good, it's still brilliant, what's going on? And I, finally I, I got a bit jack of it and I rang them up I said, why aren't you publishing my letters? And they said, oh sorry, we don't publish letters from, uh, you know, political candidates. In the local paper. I said, how are we supposed to get traction? How do we get visibility? We rely on, you know, it's all Clive Palmer up there. And, and uh, anyway, that was, he goes, oh, well, you know, leave your number and we'll look you up. It's like, okay, well, we don't have that easy ride. But I tell you, we are a genuine grassroots campaign and that's what we're doing from the ground up and we are going to build this. Which brings me to my next point. 
Now there's an analogy that there's 36 players on the football field. I'm South Australian, so I'm talking AFL here. Um, 36 players on the football field and there's 50,000 people in the stands cheering them on. And you know what happens? Those 36 players on the field, they get very, very tired. So what we need, we need the crowd to join us. So right now, this is a little bit of a plea. You don't have to run for office. We're not saying that. But you know what? You do need to do something. It's no good complaining about the state of the country without doing anything. And all it takes is as little as a small donation or a few hours on election day. But if we all just did something, we would turn the tide. We really would turn the tide. And as a candidate, it's joy to your ears when you say, can you volunteer? And someone says, yes. You are lifted right in that moment. And that might just be three hours on election day, two hours at pre-poll or a $10 donation. So I want to encourage you just to, to sit with that just a minute. And I'm going to finish on something a little different. I'd like to um, read you my worldview. So this is my worldview in a nutshell. My worldview would mean having a clear direction for our great nation of Australia. It would mean preserving our national identity and recognising our Judeo-Christian values which help to build our strong society. It would be working to build a strong family unit and teaching my children personal responsibility. I would also be teaching my children that hard work is rewarded and there are benefits to being fiscally responsible and planning for the future. My worldview would also duly reward this outlook, not penalise it, and would empower people to be their best. My worldview has cheap and viable energy options, easing pressure on families and small businesses alike. It has a simpler tax system and is working towards lowering the national debt for generations to come. It has a strong justice system and is not hamstrung by excessive red tape and bureaucracy. It has equal opportunity, not equal outcome. My worldview also recognises the sanctity of life and does not allow one group of people to make the choice to destroy another group of people. My worldview allows freedom of thought, speech and religion, as well as individual rights and not mob rule. It eases the crippling bonds of overt political correctness and applauds true democracy. This world would provide security with a strong border policy, the halving of immigration to ease our own infrastructure and congestion. We would welcome legal migrants, but we would encourage them to uphold our country's values. Yeah. Finally, my worldview would burst the Canberra bubble. It would hold politicians to account and put everyday Australians first. My worldview has a name, and it is called conservatism. And everything I have just said is upheld by the policies of the Conservatives Party. So that is why I am running on the Queensland Senate for this election. Thank you.